Hey, welcome to the 592 Movement Channel. Uh, today we're going to talk about shoes, my Hoka Challenger ATR 6s. And so I wanted to highlight them because they are the shoes that uh, I started hiking in. They were kind of the third or fourth pair as I went through and found out what kind of worked, what didn't, what was right for my feet, what was wrong for my feet, suffered through some blisters. But specifically on the Hokas, um, I wanted to talk about this, this particular shoe, the ATR 6, because this is one of those all-purpose type shoes. Like if you're a runner, you can take this on the road. And if you're a trail person, you can take it on the trail. So I want to just highlight on the tread on the bottom. And so you can see the lugs here for stability on the trail. And then of course the cushioning and this aggressive midsole, this very cushioned midsole with Hoka Oni Oni is known for. Um, that very cushiony feel uh, that also offers stability, right? So a lot of times you can get cushioned and feel like you're rocking around and kind of floating in the shoe. I can tell you that um, the Stinson, which is a true road shoe, or the Clifton, that is a true road shoe, like they're going to be super cushioned. I almost felt like I was springing. I felt like I didn't have much stability when I went off into gravel or trail or something like that. Uh, it, it just didn't offer the same same as this. So uh, the Stinson also didn't come in a wide, but the Challenger does. So you're going to get a size 7 to a size, I believe, 15 in regular or a size 7 to 14 men's in um in wide but the the challenge with that is the bigger the shoe the more it weighs right and so if you're like me if you're prepping for something like the appalachian trail you're measuring grams and ounces and calculating and figuring out just exactly what you want to take with you on the trail so so i wanted to talk about a couple of things first of all that the um the 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 reprieve here the it's it's unis like this is recycled so uh, a lot of the materials have been repurposed. I like that shoes are doing that nowadays. They're taking stuff that would be going to a landfill and they're making it work again in a, in a repurposed product. So uh, the yarns, the collar, um, a lot of this meshing that's on the side here, uh, these poly laces right here, I love these. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of people complain about them being rigid and stiff. Um, they are recycled materials, so it's a little bit, um, when you look, they're, they're super light, but they're... Uh, rigid. They're not like a shoelace where you're going to tie and you can see it even stands up and the loop it re remains on there. So what that would mean when you're running, let's say if you lace them tight and your feet swell, um, then you're going to have to stop and, and just kind of loosen these a little bit. Uh, for me, because I buy my trail uh, shoes a little bit bigger, uh, I wear a 12 and a half. These are a 13 wide. Uh, I don't feel like I slip in these as, as your shoe will uh, swell a little bit, you'll fill the shoe out. I wish this came in at 13 and a half, but it doesn't. It goes from 12 to 13 to 14, skipping the half sizes, and uh, it's just a problem for me. So um, the um, the uh, the CM EVA foam on the on the mid core is is very responsive. I'm going to talk about a couple of things with this in a minute, but but I want to just highlight this. There's a sole, a midsole, and then the actual upper of the shoe. This this tongue on the inside, it's a gusseted tongue, and so that which that means is that it's connected on the inside. I don't know if you can get a good shot of that, but it's connected in here, and so uh, it doesn't move. The tongue doesn't sway. You don't have to stop to recorrect it at all. I've never once stopped and had to remove the tongue around because it got lazy or was hanging to the side. Uh, pretty cool feature of this. The bottom has this zonal rubber too. I'll, I'll put it side up. Uh, what that means is that it's it's built for durability. Now you could tell that here on the mid side here where this is worn, there's no in, there's no lugs here anymore on here. That is because uh, I've put about 600 and plus miles on these shoes, and a lot of it has been on pavement, and so the lugs have worn just in the middle, but still 600 to 650 miles is a long way. But you can see how they're they're along the outside is this zonal rubber that they're talking about. It's a reinforced, and then the middle there's the cushiony feel on here. What's great about this is that it doesn't have a rock guard inside of the shoe. There's no insert like on a true 100% trail shoe. Um, and even with that, I've been able to step on roots, um, sharp rocks, all kinds of stuff and not have a problem in these shoes, which I dig it. You can also see that with all the miles that are on these shoes, there's just nothing falling apart on it after 600 miles. 
and I'm and I'm a big guy. I started uh, walking slash hiking at 350 pounds in these shoes, and I'm down to about 280 right now. These are the shoes that carried me through those 70 pounds of weight loss, and you can tell like 350 pounds banging on these shoes, um, putting steps in. I would think I would see more wear and tear. The only thing that has started to degrade on the shoe outside of the lugs on here is the um is the inside of the collar here. I know that's going to be a hard shot to see, but this is actually peeling away inside, and this is part of the recycled material. Again, 600, 650 miles, I'm not like too bent out of shape about those. Um, like they've done really well. So here are the stats on this shoe, right? Uh, first of all, the American Podi Podiatric Podiatric Medical Association has actually endorsed these shoes. I, the feel of it, I know a lot of people with plantar fasciitis that that have responded via, you know, whether it's Google or YouTube or whatever, that this is great for that particular issue as well. Um, this is a 37 by 30 spring measurement. What that means on that is that it's the difference between the angle of the toe and the heel, the spring, right? So as you're, as you're walking, cause you know, you're, you're almost heel striking as a hiker, whereas a runner would be more on the, on the front of the shoe. Uh, but that's going to give you a high toe lift on here to return energy. So, you know, long distances, you're not going to get worn out on there. Um, it also has a 641 CM cubed volume. What that means is the, the actual, uh, foam that is in this shoe, right? So if you're rating shoes on cushion, the higher the CM cubed is, is, is the volume, the higher that number, the more cushion you're going to have in the shoe. This is a medium cushion shoe as compared to like the Stinson that was really like walking on a cloud. It was, it was pretty amazing. Um, the weight they say on the men's shoe is a 9.8 ounce. I don't find that to be the weight on here. What I find is that the higher in the sizes you go, obviously there's more material. The shoe is going to weigh more. I think the size 11 weighed like 11 and a half ounces. So on a size 13, you're talking about um, 24 ounces minimum between uh, both shoes here, right? So you got a pound and a half of shoes as you're looking at your weight and overall for whatever hike or long hike that you're going to do. Um, that all plays in every ounce every gram, uh, every pound you have in your pack, right? The the other one is that this show this shoe has a five millimeter um, what they call a heel drop, right? Meaning from the heel to the toe, the heel sits at a five millimeter angle. Now it's exaggerated, but the heel sits a little bit higher. So what that means is that if you're used to a heel drop shoe and you move to something like, I think the uh, Lone Peak 6 has a zero drop on it. It's a zero drop shoe. Um, you're going to find that your, your leg muscles are going to actually hit a little bit differently from shoe to shoe. And so if you're having a discomfort, like a shin splint, or if you're having some sort of a calf pain or thigh or whatever, knee that you're going on, uh, you're going to want to talk to someone who can fit you and understands what the, the drop will do to, to the different muscle groups that you're using, right? So um, on a stability, like this is kind of a neutral stability shoe. Um, what I mean by that is on the rating side is like all people who rate these shoes are going to take a look and uh, rate them on stability. What I noticed is that, that the stability front to back wasn't as good as the side to side. Like on a, on a running shoe, that stability um, running is, is really easy, but hiking when you're moving side to side and diagonal on the trail, it's a little bit differently, but I found this shoe side to side had a lot more stability than it does front to back on there. The other thing is the cushion. It's a balanced cushion on here, so you're not going to get a full cushion ride, but you're not going to get uh, a minimalist shoe either level of cushion. I think this is an incredibly comfortable shoe. I used to come back in the beginning of walking with sore feet. Um, when I had the wrong size and I wore the Stinsons that didn't come in a wide, I also got blisters and everything as well. So, um, the, um, the sizes, I, I gave you the sizes to run. The one cool thing about Hoka too, is they put the actual measurements on here, right? So you're going to be able to figure out what the CM3 is. It's a 641, uh, as well as the 37 by 30 on the spring measurement. So it's really easy, the, the, the numbers across here. So um, I'm, uh, the pull tab here to get the shoe on and off or to hook gaiters to, uh, I wish this was actually turned sideways so that it was easier to connect things um, up and down on here. So I uh, love the shoe, uh, would uh, would love, I think I'm going to use the AT, um, ATR6 on the Appalachian Trail. Uh, it's just a shoe that I've, I've learned to fall in love with. So I uh, hope to see you guys next time. Have a great day. Thanks.